Hey, you're about to watch a sick interview coming up with a guest that I've brought on. And I'm just gonna kind of let them do their thing. I'm gonna let them do their thing. So I hope you can enjoy this. Just grab a notebook. Make sure you grab a notebook and a pen so that you can take notes. I'm, I'm not the one sharing stuff here. This is them. So let them do their business with you and coach you into something relating to marketing and teach you something new. You can learn from people from all different industries. So also hit the subscribe uh, button and then hit a bell. The bell should pop up after you hit subscribe. That would just help me uh, bring the subscriber number up. You know, I could, I love that. And then it'll also notify you whenever new videos go live or new interviews like this go live. So make sure you do that. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. We got Sam here. Hey Sam, how's it going? How's it going, man? Can you talk a little about a little bit about who you are and yeah. what companies you've started? For sure. Um, so I'm the co-founder slash uh, kind of more operations person for uh, three companies. Um, two of them, which I launched uh, with my brother, and then one of which basically my wife actually launched her brand, and I'm kind of like her uh, her sidekick in that, which has been a lot of fun. Um, so the three companies are Tiny Rituals, uh, which is a jewelry brand. We have Savannah, which is kind of like a uh, yoga lifestyle clothing slash gift slash jewelry band. And then lastly, my wife's brand, which is the one I'm primarily spending most of my time working on right now is uh, Sozi, which is basically women's apparel brand. Um, so yeah, I've been in the e-commerce realm for about, I think like since 2011, 2012, um, and just been kind of plodding along kind of managing and operating e-commerce brands. Wow. All right. All right. Where were you before 2011, 2012? What made uh, you want to get into that? Uh, we got into it. I kind of fell off backwards into it. So what happened was my dad actually, he, he owned like, I think in 1994, he started a little company called Savannah or at the time, I think he actually, he started the company is called t-shirt planet was originally the name of his original nice. company. But basically, he owned a screen print embroidery company, and uh, he is kind of an old school hippie. So he's making like uniforms for like companies. I think he actually like had worked with Home Depot and like a bunch of like big national chains where he just like make like you know basic uniforms. But because he had the equipment, he started printing like T-shirts with like home symbols on them and stuff like that because he was like he just wanted it for himself. And everyone was asking him about them when he'd make them. So then he ended up making a little more, and then basically selling them to friends. And then it kind of it turned into like a little bit of a catalog business where essentially he was just buying a bunch of random stuff that he liked for himself and then buying a little extra and selling it to friends or whoever was interested. That kind of grew as a little side gig of his for like a number of years. Um, and then he just kind of operated kind of on the side. And then in, I think to, I think 2006, he retired and kind of sold his embroidery and like uniform business. And then just kind of did uh, what was now called Savannah Spirit for basically a couple of years, just kind of out of his garage, just for fun um he was like working in the whole e-commerce realm way back in the day before shop five before any of the stuff that you have now uh and he was running google ads i think in 2000 like i think 2007 2008 and then when in 2008 i think when the market crashed basically advertising on google basically got extremely expensive and really inefficient and it wasn't really he was at that point where he kind of wanted to retire um so he basically ended up just like turning off all of his ads just letting his website run uh and just selling off the inventory that he had available. And then fast forward about two, three years, he still had like, I think 30 or $40,000 worth of inventory sitting in his garage. And uh, at the time I was working just in retail, working for Lou Lemon and my brother was working in New York um, in I think like creative design or something like that. Um, anyway, point being is that the website my dad had built and had just been like letting it coast for years. Uh, was actually about to expire. So he had to upgrade to a new software. Otherwise, basically, it would just, you know, uh, be left there. So the plan was my brother was going to essentially rebuild a new website real quick. I would ship all the inventory and then we just split all the money um, and, you know, and just basically go on our way and just pocket some, pocket some dough. Um, and then we started doing that. Basically, it started, you know, going. We kind of like randomly built a little brand off of it and then obviously things kept on going and going and that was kind of in the early heyday of facebook marketing and shopify actually yeah funny story we were in the first 200 
uh, businesses who use Shopify. So I think there was only like 11 employees at Shopify at the time. Um, so uh, we started really early with Shopify, with Facebook and all that other stuff. And things just started going really well and kind of started to consume me and my brother's time over the couple of years. So anyway, fast forward another uh, 10 years from there, basically here we are now with three companies and kind of working in e-commerce full time, which is not the normal way, I guess, to get into e-commerce, but the way, way it happened for us. Wait, so Savannah's, Savannah is the one that you were working with, with your dad way back in the day, yeah. right? Yeah. Wow. Ba- basically me, basically me and my brother took over in 2011 just to sell the inventory and because it just kept on selling and we discovered Facebook marketing, you know, in 2000 you know, 12, 13, back when it was cheap and easy. Uh, back when Facebook ads manager, when you run Facebook ads back then, you were buying, you, there was like nothing to do but run Facebook ads towards your page to just get likes. It was like the only thing you'd run ads on. And then when you'd post on like your Facebook page at the time, you'd get like 500 or 1,000 likes every post and you'd sell like 20 or 30 items. Like so you get like 20 or 30 orders per post just from like organically. Um, so like that was like the original Facebook time back in the day. And uh, anyway, yeah, it's like a, it was a really long time ago. I don't think a lot of people that are in Facebook, like email marketing or not email marketing, uh, digital marketing probably were involved at that point um, to remember that. But anyway, it was pretty crazy. Anyway, point is, is that it started scaling and we it just kind of ended up becoming me and my brother's full-time job. And we ended up taking over the business and running it from there. Wow. Um, so you are in charge of a few different brands. Are you in a managerial role in all of them, including uh, wife's brand? In, uh, I, I would say, yeah, I guess. Um, I, I don't know. I, you just, I don't know about managerial, but basically uh, in terms of what I do for Tiny Rituals and Savannah, basically I run operations. So that's customer service, shipping, fulfillment, all that stuff. Um, and then for Sozi, uh, I run the uh, marketing and uh, logistics and operations as well for those two companies. Mm-hmm. And basically it's just like, when people ask me what I do, it's just like anything involved with e-commerce is what I do. Specifically with Sozi, the only thing I don't do is I don't design products. Um, I set up systems that help basically like our purchasing team buy stuff or like, you know, setting up inventory forecasting or finance stuff or basically anything like helping set up systems. But in terms of actually like day to day what I do, it's everything but basically designing and ordering the product mm. is pretty much what I'm involved in. Mm. Okay. How much work is that? Would you say? It's a lot of, it's a lot of work. <laughs> I, re, I, I think like, uh, I think it was three months ago. So basically three months ago, I stepped out of uh, working full time for Savannah and Tiny Rituals or my, me and my brother's brands. And I'm kind of letting those kind of be run by my brother now, which is great. It's basically been way more relaxing. So now I'm focusing like most of my time specifically on Sozi, uh, but that's been really nice. Working on three companies is not fun at all. Um, it's like it's kind of hard to like care deeply about three things simultaneously. So that's like, that's the most stress about that. It's like, just like trying to like really care deeply and like have a vision for what like you need to kind of like achieve and do at all times for three different companies. It's just, it's not fun, but it is fun actually when you have like having three companies is really good in the sense that you get a really good context of like what works universally across multiple companies versus what's like niche specific, you know, um, that's really helpful to get a, like a broader understanding of overall. Yeah. It sounds like you're getting the, uh, the view of an agency without being the agency. You're seeing how all the brands are working, um, how certain things work with all the brands, but you're managing the brands as well. So, um, what was I going to ask? I was going to ask, um, what's your favorite thing to do, would you say, with all the companies? So you, you're a man of many hats. What's your favorite thing to do, though? Uh, favorite thing to do is developing new, like, programs or website stuff. So, like, one thing I was, I'm super stoked on that we just launched on Sozi. If you pull up our website right now, I'm going to pull it up to remind myself. Um, we're, like, we, I don't know if you look at our top navigation, and we just launched this new thing called the workshop, which is still kind of in development, and we're still kind of figuring out exactly what we wanted to do, but um, we're trying to figure out a way where, like, kind of to figure out a way of how to, like, product test without having to spend money on inventory. So one of the things that we did was we built this, like, this workshop thing, and the, the general concept is, like, we have three different kind of functionalities of the workshop. There's submit a style idea, 
which was like super simple, like Google type form um, for people to submit ideas of like what product they want to carry. We get like all the time where people are like, oh, you guys should carry like a nightgown. You guys should carry this, you should carry that. And like, instead of basically just being like, oh, thanks, you know, that's, thank you for, you know, the feedback. Basically what we're, what we're doing now is we're telling them like, hey, go to this, go to our website and actually submit it. Like if you have, a, if you have like a idea of what you want that to look like, take a snapshot of it of if you have it in your closet or something like that or like you see it online and you're just like hey you know i want to buy this but i don't want to buy it from like a fast fashion chinese company um i basically like they can take those snapshots and submit to us and we can kind of ingest them through uh our portal and that automatically drops them directly into our google drive so that was really fun just setting up the form and kind of thinking out like what information do we actually want to need from customers and kind of like kind of helping guide that process. But then the next part, which is I'm super stoked on is the actual workshop tab, which we just released, which is like a custom designed uh, collection for, um, we basically redid it with, I think like, I think it's called like Shopify 2.0 or whatever. Basically we kind of built a new collection template, but basically what it does is it allows us to take those ideas that people are submitting and we can, like we can send them off to our manufacturer and they'll make a sample uh they can turn around a sample i think in like one to two weeks or something like that so they'll send us a sample pretty much right back uh we take it we basically take a quick snapshot of it throw it up in the workshop and then we basically allow people to vote if they like or dislike it um so that just went live like a week ago so figuring out how to like do that in terms of development design like that kind of stuff is my favorite thing. It's just building out like new engaging stuff for basically customers to engage with. This is, this particular has been pretty rad because I was expecting people when like, allowing people to vote on future products, I was expecting people to be way too positive and just be like, oh yeah, I like, I love everything you do. And that's not the case. They are quite uh, ruthless with their voting on what they hate, what we're planning on making and what they like. But it's pretty cool because now we can see like, you know, before we actually spend you know, $20,000 to produce a product, we can actually see that like, oh, you know, like 97% of the people that are voting on here actually like this product versus one of our products is completely bombed on the workshop, which is good to know before we spent that much money. Mm. What are the, some of the major things that you've learned or a couple of the major things you've learned because you've been in this business for so long? Um, if you had to look back on the past 10 years, what have you learned? Um, what are the major things you've learned, I guess? Simple yeah. question. Um, finance is one thing. I think basically the, uh, I think the biggest basically thing that I wish I had known earlier was better like understanding of unit economics and customer life cycle. I think we basically, we kind of like, we were pretty young when we started in e-commerce and we didn't really know. It was just kind of like everything was based on ROAS and like, you know, basically spending money and just uh, we basically nothing was really like thought out very well and where we could have really continued to move aggressively we basically pulled back and kind of the performance drop on facebook kind of caught up with us faster than it should have uh i don't know in terms like there's there's after 10 years there's been so much stuff we've done like i've done in this realm that i can't really speak to that i think it's just like I think basically just understanding how to make money in e-commerce and like knowing, understanding your numbers in terms of like what margins you need, what like, you know, allocation of how much money you need to spend on advertising, all that stuff. I really wish I had paid more attention to earlier on rather than like just in the past two to three years, um, which I think uh, Common Thread Collective puts out really good content for that kind of stuff. It's really, really helpful, the stuff that they put out. Yeah. Can you go more into that? Um, what do you... What do you wish you learned better? You said you were focusing on ROAS a ton. Um, can you go into what you did learn that you've said, okay, this is the key to um, moving on and making a brand that actually lasts? I think uh, understanding like basically just like one thing, I mean, just until like two, three years ago, we didn't even really properly do our bookkeeping. You know, like it was just kind of like looking at our bank account and seeing how much money we had, you know, essentially. Um, now we basically kind of look more at like how much does it actually cost to buy a customer? What's the average order value? What's the lifetime value? What's like the CAC payback period? Stuff like that. It's definitely been extremely difficult recently for the past like three to six months with iOS 14 and Facebook advertising just getting outrageously expensive, super fast, like far faster than we could have like planned for anticipated. Um, but basically just like understanding like how much money you're spending on every category, you know, like how much am I spending on shipping? How much am I spending on film? And, you know, how much does returns and discounts like take out of my overall margin? 
um, and then basically kind of giving you an understanding of how uh, how much money you really have to play with with advertising. I, I looking back now, I wish that basically like we launched Sozy kind of in the beginning of the COVID like uh, tailwind. So basically, we caught a lot of momentum from COVID that we didn't realize because we launched Sozy in like late 2019 which is like right when I was like, I was just turning on Facebook ads myself and like spending 20, 25 bucks a day, like re basically re-familiarizing myself with the platform um, to figure that one out. And it took off, but it also like, it took off right around the same time the COVID, which is kind of like, you don't really realize when you don't have any previous historical data, you know what I mean? So with Sozi, basically we scaled extremely fast. And I think obviously COVID was a huge benefit to us. I think obviously our branding, our quality of our products and everything else has been really like, really impactful and helpful, but I didn't really anticipate how much basically COVID was benefiting basically our business. And then coming into this year, like we, I kind of like looked at, I basically, we hadn't really organized our finances enough for that brand yet. And we kind of were like, you know, like when you're making a shit ton of money month over month and you're scaling like, you know, 20% month over month growth you're kind of like, oh yeah, like let's try this influencer marketing agency. Let's use this email marketing agency. Like, you know, just basically you go down the road of like trying all this kind of different stuff. If I had basically, I, if I'd been paying attention more to my numbers earlier on, I probably would not have like tried as much stuff. I think I would have more buckled down with like what I know historically works extremely well, try more like paid channels, um, like TikTok, Snapchat earlier on. Um, that's probably like, I would have been a little more organized about basically how much our OPEX costs were like charging more for shipping, which is something that I just recently started doing, charging more for shipping, raising free shipping thresholds, stuff like that, that I think was like, we were a little bit more soft on early because it was easy that we're getting a little bit more organized with now, but that's kind of stuff that like, just in general, um, I think it's super important to like understand and pay attention to, you know, where you're actually making money and losing money and what months those, you know, that happens. Would you take any of that knowledge and go back to when you started and totally do things differently? Or do you see it as the way you started is just how it goes when you don't know anything, you don't know anything? I think, well, like earlier on back in the day, like when I remember specifically us years ago, like in 2015, we were like, are you familiar with Facebook marketing? Like, are you enough in the platform to like, uh, I've, like, I've done it a fair bit, but nothing super big now. So like, so one thing that's hilarious is I remember in like, I think 2016, we were basically, I remember specifically our return on ad spend or like our ROAS in, in Facebook ads manager was reporting like a three and a four. It come down from a five to a three. And we're like, oh my God, this is so unaffordable. This is so expensive. Oh my God. <laughs> like how, how are we possibly going to be able to manage? Like, you know, this is just so ridiculous. And like at the time we were like, we weren't looking at like, okay, you're buying a fucking person for like 20 or 30 bucks. You know what I mean? And their lifetime value to you is like X amount. You know what I mean? Um, so we were basically like pulling back on ad spend because we're like, you know, we didn't really understand seasonality of like, oh, you know, certain times of year, you're just not going to be as efficient. So like you, you basically read into like seasonality as if this is like a long-term trend for your business. Um, and you like, we basically were buying customers extremely profitably, not even knowing that we were, you know? So that time we're like, oh, let's pull back. Let's like slow down. You know what I mean? Whereas like really looking back now is like, that's when I saw a lot of brands, like looking back now, I saw a lot of brands that were kind of launched around similar times. A lot, a lot of companies did the same thing we do kind of like plateaued or basically didn't take that like hockey stick arc, you know, they kind of just like mellowed out a little bit. And then there's other ones that were just like, went absolutely outrageous. And I think looking back now and actually having met some of those founders and talked to them, I realized now a lot more of those guys actually had finance backgrounds or had someone in the organization that was like a, a like extremely high level like uh, logistics operator or was like a had a, like a really good understanding of finance and they understood that like hey this is how you budget this is how you forecast this is how you you know we're actually doing really really good and now we should lean into it more and more uh versus the other companies that basically were kind of like oh let's you know let the foot off the gas pedal Definitely, I wish I'd known that information back in 2015. <laughs> Would have been way easier. Of course, you probably could say that now. I bet you, like, you know, fast forward five years from now, you'll probably be like, oh my God, I wish I knew this in 2001, you know, when iOS 14 happened. But uh, we all wish we bought Bitcoin. <laughs> so there's always those things in life. We all wish we bought Bitcoin. 
Um, yeah. So thanks for your time, man. Is there anything else you want to share? Uh, think of someone like who's kind of where you're at, but one step behind you. What would you share with them as a closing statement for them to go and learn? I would try and I would say like don't try and basically hire or uh, hire agencies or hire contractors or basically try and like uh, try and outsource everything. I'd say like it, there's a lot of like in the realm of e-commerce. I feel like there's a lot of uh, when you listen to Twitter or LinkedIn. I think that's basically a lot of people out there make things sound a lot more complex than they actually are. And in reality, like, yes, there is complexity to like, you know, uh, digital marketing to some extent, but I think that like in reality, like basically copying the big guys a lot of times gets you 90% of the way there, I think, you know, and like, you don't need to basically try and go down every avenue. I see a lot of e-commerce people where they try and like, they think that a Facebook marketing agency is going to basically help them scale, you know, um, rather than focusing on like improving their product. They're like, it's, it's always about like, oh, you know, if we, I just got a better Facebook marketing agency or like we did better on TikTok ads. It's always that. It's like they never focus on actually uh, either doing it themselves and actually understanding it before they hire out for it or also making sure that they focus on what's actually important, which is like have the best product possible. You know, um, you can see the companies that are actually crushing it are definitely usually the companies that have exceptional products. That's great. Thanks, Sam. Appreciate it. Where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn or Twitter. Um, awesome. Search my name. Sweet. Well, thanks for your time, man. Appreciate it. No problem, dude. Hey, if you like this video, you should like it, subscribe, ring the bell, and then go follow me on Twitter because that's where I'm posting all the announcements about stuff like this. So, um, yeah, I'll talk to you later. Stay tuned for the next video.